For about the last 30 years, the FAA has been asking the primarily the big uh, uh, simulator makers, the guys that make the 15, 20 million dollar simulators, to put artificial air traffic control into those simulators. And for the last 30 years, they've been telling the FAA that it's going to be they're 10 years away, and they're still telling them they're 10 years. Away. Our uh, technology team happens to have quite a lot of background in voice recognition from our days with the other companies we work for. So we took this problem on about two years ago and looked at the issue of developing a voice recognition system that was accurate enough with any student pilot that we could build the logic behind that to create a real autonomous air traffic control environment. We find that, and, and this is even true at uh, the really expensive uh, uh, big jet schools that instructors do a pretty poor job of playing ATC in the cockpit. And that if a student can get really comfortable with the radio using standard AIM terminology, they can get that out of the way before they find themselves in the mix. So Parrot was developed to work with all of our simulators. It's a little bit of hardware and a software program that sits off to the side of any of our simulators and watches the simulation and takes on the role of whatever air traffic control service that's plugged in. Remember, our simulators have the entire world database in them. Every single airport in the world is in there, and all the terrain in between is correct. And Parrot knows every single frequency at every single airport. It knows where the airplane is at all times, what altitudes it at, so what frequency it ought to be able to receive. And so it can change its voice and take on the role of air traffic control uh, ground or tower or clearance, depending on what's dialed in. Now it helps that the aviation uh, aviation language is pretty narrow. You know, you don't call the tower to order a pizza, so pizza is not one of those things you gotta make sure you can recognize when somebody calls. So this uh, this TD, and as I said, it works on all our simulators. This TD has Parrot running with it. The simulation is sitting on the ground at runway 17 left at Austin Bergstrom Airport. And at Austin Bergstrom, the ATIS is 124.4. So, and I've got 124.4 in standby here. And when I put, when I flip that over to active, here's what Parrot's thinking. The pilot just changed frequencies. So let's take a look at that and where the airplane is and says, oh yes, 124.4 is ATIS at Austin Bergstrom Airport. It then goes out and looks at the weather that was put into that simulation, whether it was rain or wind or anything else, and builds an ATIS string that the student then can listen to to get the flight started. Parrot also selects the runway it wants to use based on the winds, and it timestamps every hour with a, with, with a different letter. Welcome to the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Real-time, 24-7 online, audio, and video programming, where aviation has been getting updated for over a decade. Distributing over 11,000 stories, features, audio, and video programs every year. Only ANN covers aviation and aerospace with this much depth, insight, and expertise. Check us out on the web at aero-news.net. So I'm going to switch this over to ATIS for just a second, so we Austin can listen Bergstrom to Parrot Bergstrom International yes. Airport Information Uniform Weather Observation, 1953 Zulu, winds, 170 at 05 gust 07, visibility more than 10, sky clear, temperature 202.10, altimeter 29.91, expect the visual approach runway 17 right. Read back all taxi and hold short instructions. That's ATIS for Austin Bergstrom at this, and, and under these weather conditions. We could pick this simulation up and move it to any airport in the world, and the ATIS would be read for, for that particular city. And now we're switched over to the tower frequency. There's a whole lot of different functions the tower does, but it isn't dozens. And while we're on the ground, we, we're going to call for a takeoff, or we're going to ask them what the wind is, or there's several things we're going to do. Now, as you might be able to see on the camera, we're actually parked at runway 17 left. And Parrot told us 17 right was active. Because in a tie, and at Austin Bergson Airport, we have a 17 left and a right. In a tie, Parrot selects the longer of the two runways, so it selected 17 right for us. But I can change the, uh, the runway designation if I ask them to lead up. So if I, I key the mic and I say, Austin Tower, Redbird 345, Romeo Bravo, requesting runway 17 left. 
Runway 17 left is now active. It's as simple as that. So Parrot understands everything I say. It goes through kind of a logic engine, pulls my sentence apart and says, this is what this person wants. And as you can tell, maybe uh, there's quite a bit of ambient sound in here and, and nothing going on around us, including the jets going overhead, uh, will bother Parrot in this, in this environment, just like a real pilot. Integra Release 9 sets a new standard with the easiest to use pilot interface in all of general aviation. Access to any of Release 9's powerful capabilities is as simple as pressing the desired bi-directional page key. Pressing the same key in a desired direction navigates to the clearly labeled tabs with no more guessing as to what a given pilot input would do. Avidyne's Integra Release 9 is the next generation in fully integrated flight deck technology and the easiest to use page and tab user interface is just one of the many benefits designed to make your flying easier and safer. So now it's time to take off and if we don't ask for permission to take off, Parrot's going to call us and give us a phone number to call. So I'm going to go ahead and call Austin Tower, Redbird 345, Romeo Bravo at runway 17 left, ready for takeoff. Redbird 345, Romeo Bravo, Austin Bergstrom International Tower, cleared for takeoff, runway 17 left. About 30% of the time, Parrot will tell me to line up and wait. About 10% of the time, it'll tell me to uh, hold for landing traffic. But if I don't call Parrot back now and confirm that I've got those instructions, he's going to call me again in 30 seconds and tell me to do it again. So I'll say, Redbird 345, Romeo Bravo, cleared for takeoff, runway 17 left. And now he'll leave me alone. Now this is where it gets really interesting because as the students trying to learn how to use the radio, they very often get confused. If I say something that isn't found in the aims, not nonsense, but certainly uh, ask for something that you shouldn't be doing on the radio, and I say, Austin Tower, Redbird 345, Romeo Bravo, is it okay if I leave now? Redbird 345, Romeo Bravo, Austin Bergstrom International Tower, same again. And Parrot never gets tired of saying say again. This will go on for hours. And very often a student will be getting say again from Parrot and they're going to need to figure out uh, what it is that's causing Parrot not to understand what they're saying. So no matter what frequency you're on or no matter what you're doing, you can ask for help. And Parrot will stop being ATC and be an instructor for you. So if I'd simply key the mic and say, help me. You are currently tuned to Austin Bergstrom International Tower Frequency. You've requested and received permission to take off. So, go ahead and take off. It's as simple as that, because Parrot always knows what's going on. So suddenly we've got a tool that a student can learn communications without an instructor uh, in sight, uh, with a very, very patient uh, instructor in Parrot, and get real good at this before they have to go mix it up in Class B airspace.